Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video, I'm going to be filming a quick little first impressions review on the very, very bougie Natasha Denona Mini Sunset Palette. This little palette here comes with five eyeshadows and it is 25 US dollars, 47 New Zealand dollars for five eyeshadows. So it's a really expensive product and I thought doing a first impressions review would be a good way to dive into the world of Natasha Denona. It is my first time using this palette. It's my first time using Natasha Denona. So I'm just spewing out my like initial thoughts and this was actually the final outcome, a little sneak peek. But yeah, if you guys are curious to hear my initial thoughts, then just continue watching. All right, so my eyes are primed and ready to go. I pretty much just did my everyday makeup routine. So so my eyes are primed with my concealer and with a little bit of loose powder and that's just what I normally do every single day. The only time that I do use primer is typically when I do a half cut crease of that sort and I would use the P. Louise face but for an everyday makeup look I just prime my eyes with my concealer and a bit of powder. So with that being said let's jump right into the little shadows. I'm gonna go in with this shade here. This is called 175 CM Guava and I'm just taking my ColourPop tapered blending brush. I'm just going to dip a little. I don't know how pigmented these are and I'm just gonna work that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions. First impressions, this is pigmented off the bat. You can definitely see that against my skin. I'm also noticing that there is like little to no fallout. So as I am working this transition shadow into my crease, I want to give you guys some product info. So this little five pan palette is 25 US dollars and 47 New Zealand dollars, which it's honestly so crazy how expensive this is. I actually didn't buy this palette. My friend Denise, who's also on YouTube, lended me this because she didn't use it. She actually bought this for her wedding, but she ended up not using it for her wedding, so she never touched it. Like, it's pretty much brand new. Like, it doesn't even look swatched, so... Thank you, Denise, if you're watching. I finally can get to try Natasha Denona because I've been wanting to try her eyeshadows for a really long time, but obviously her pricing is just not in my budget. Like five eyeshadows for almost $50, that's insane. I'm gonna try my best to speak in USD, but I buy in New Zealand dollars, so I might be like jumping back and forth, but 50 New Zealand dollars is a lot for just five eyeshadows in my opinion. But so far these shadows are blending really well just like very effortlessly but I feel like I can do that with my other eyeshadows as well. In this specific five pan palette there are two mattes and three metallics and she has 11 of these palettes in total. This actually reminds me of the new e.l.f. bite size eyeshadows. A lot of you guys are wanting me to like purchase and review. I might do that and maybe give a little comparison because they actually look quite similar from memory. I'm going to take some of that shadow onto my lower lash line as well. And then taking this shade in the middle, this one is 177CM Dirty Mars. And I'm using my Morphe M433 brush and I'm going to work this in at the outer corner of my eyes. Just using circular motions just to get a really good blend. Okay, this shadow is really pretty. There's no patchiness. It looks exactly like how it looks in the pan, a really good chocolate brown. Oftentimes a lot of these warm tone browns in the pan can look very warm. Warm, but once you place them on your eyes, they turn a little bit ashy, but this is That's really good you guys. I don't know what it is, but something about this is very warm very pigmented and it just looks so smooth. But I want to talk about the formulations a little bit because she does have a couple of shadow formulations. So as you heard when I was reading out the shadow name, I said 177CM. CM stands for Creamy Matte. And on her site it says this is Natasha Denona's signature matte formula. It's creamy to the touch and it will seamlessly blend on the lid. When you swatch this palette, it definitely does feel very like smooth and like almost buttery and I don't know on the skin it really looks very smooth as well and like very diffused out. Although Natasha Denona is really expensive I like how she has these mini palettes for you know those of us that's a little bit on the budget but you do want to try something from her. Although it's still pricey it's more affordable than blowing $200 on a palette if you know what I mean.
And I'm just taking Dirty Mars onto my lower lash line as well, but I'm just going to press that at the outer third of my lower lash. And now taking this shadow over here, this is called 178M Sunbeam and the M stands for metallic obviously and I'll be using my AOA Studio E139 brush. I'm going to use this metallic shadow dry first just to see how pigmented it is and then if needed we can go with a wet brush and pack that on. I think you definitely can see the metallicness using this dry, but I think using it wet will definitely give more of that metallic high sheen. So I'm just going to wet my brush slightly. I personally feel like wetting your brush doesn't take away from the formulation just because I feel like most of us wet our brush when we are using metallic shadows, so. Oh, that's so pretty. Look at that, wow. So for the metallics on her website, um, she says that there are different metallics in multiple textures. So the first texture is foiled rich in texture, which I think the shade Sunbeam will fall under this category. The second one is a satin soft finish metallic. And the third one is sparkling, which contains varying sizes of crushed mineral pearls for a dazzling effect. And when I read this, I instantly thought of ColourPop, obviously. I'm very well invested into ColourPop, but as I was reading this, Colourpop has these similar finishes of metallics as well and I will show you guys what I am talking about after I finish my eye look. So although like Natasha will obviously have her own twist to it, these kind of finishes um, you can get them at Colourpop which is definitely a lot more affordable place to shop for makeup. I'm not saying that these shadows are bad honestly but I don't know I feel like a lot of us are on the budget. I think it's just really hard to like decide if you really want to get this or not because it's just so incredible incredibly expensive. I feel like Natasha Denona and Pat McGrath are the brands that like I really want to try but they're so expensive that I think these kind of brands are really great for gifts. Like who wouldn't want to receive a Natasha Denona palette or a Pat McGrath palette. Now that I'm playing with it I don't know if this is the foiled rich metallic or if it's the sparkling metallic because there's a lot of little sparkles in this. And now going into this red metallic here, this one is called 176M Apollo. This one, looking at it, does seem like it's the satin soft finish, but I will be using my ColourPop E3 brush and I'm not going to use the shadow wet because I just want to take this and place it at the center of my eyes just to add a, like a little pop of red. I want to blend that gold into the mattes and I'm just going to use this shadow to help me do that. And then just taking the last shadow in the palette, this is 179M and this is called Halo. I'm using my Fenty Beauty 220 Precision Brush and I'm going to use this to highlight my inner corners as well as my brow bone. So that is the eyeshadow done. I did end up using all five shadows for this eye look. I am just going to go off camera and finish off my eyes, finish off my face, and then I'll come back, show you guys the ColourPop metallics that I was talking about, and just give you my final thoughts whether this palette is worth it or not, and just my final verdict. So I'm going to go off camera. I'll be back in two seconds. And this, you guys, is the completed look. I just added a wing liner, and I used the ColourPop BFF liquid liner in the shade Grande to do so. I added lashes. These are Natalia Light from House of Lashes. My gloss is the Colourpop Luxe Gloss in the shade Slow Motion. But I'll be sure to leave all of the product info down below in the description box for you guys. But now I want to talk about my final thoughts on the Little Sunset Palette from Natasha Denona. So after playing around first impressions, I personally don't think I can and recommend this palette to you guys like I think it's good and if you have the money to do so then I mean by all means it's your money you can spend it on whatever you want but I personally feel like for eyeshadow and for $50 like 50 New Zealand dollars to me personally it's not really 
worth it like these are really great shadows but I feel like I could create this exact eye look I'm using Colourpop shadows Morphe, Anastasia, Juvia's Place I feel like there are a lot of like medium end brands that can give me this exact eye look I feel like if you were to see me in public you wouldn't be like wow she is wearing Natasha Denona she's wearing $50 worth of eyeshadows on her eyes you know like no one's really gonna notice that I don't think there's too much of a big difference and even just working with the shadows I feel like there wasn't really much of a difference but I think for like a special occasion like Denise she bought this for her wedding I think buying this for your wedding is very special because you know it's a lot of money and I think when you look back to this palette you'll just remember like your special day or if you're like graduating or something like I think this is a nice gift to give to someone or to get for yourself for like an special occasion but I think for like everyday wear I'm personally okay with the more affordable products that I have in my collection I'm not trying to say this is bad or anything but I think for someone that's a little bit more on the budget this wasn't anything like extraordinary if you know what I mean but it's still a really great formula but the price point is just too high for someone in my position. So I think I'll just leave it at that because I don't want to keep going in circles. I feel like I'm just going to continue saying the same things. You guys get what I'm trying to say here. But before I end the video, I quickly want to give you guys a little bit of like comparisons and just talk about the metallic finishes that I was mentioning earlier. I don't know if anybody is going to go into this much detail about eyeshadows, but the eyeshadows, the little squares, they are 0.8 grams each. And if you want to compare to Colourpop, Colourpop's pans, these are one gram each. So you get 0.2 extra grams of Colourpop ones, but if you want to compare to Anastasia, which is a little bit more pricey but cheaper than Natasha Denona, the Anastasia ones are 0.7 grams. So this one is 0.1 gram less than the Natasha Denona. So it's really not going to make that much of a difference because in reality, when do you ever hit pan on eyeshadows? Like it's very rare. So yeah. I don't know if that was completely useless, but just letting you know, probably not even that helpful, but that's what I get up to in my spare time. I just research. Anyway, let's dive deeper into Natasha Denona's formulation. So I'm just going to put a screenshot up here of the different formulations that Natasha Denona has, but I only talked about the creamy matte and the metallic in this video today because that's the only ones that I tried. There are a bunch of other formulations that she has. So I do want to touch on the metallic since she said that she has three different types of metallics and I personally saw that Colourpop also has three different metallics and I think Through My Eyes by I Love Zeta E and Colourpop has all three of these metallics in this palette. I don't even know if this is helpful but hey. I get so many comments that people say I talk too much but like I leave timestamps in my description box so if you think I talk too much you can refer to the timestamps or you can just exit out of the video and not hear me talk okay? Thank you. So the first metallic that she has is foiled and rich in texture and I'm assuming this is more of just like a straight out metallic. And from I Love Set E's palette, I'm gonna take Emerald Dream right here and swatch it for you guys. I think this is just a metallic. This is super high sheen. I'm just going over it just to build it up a little bit. Um, but that is what you call a metallic okay and the second formulation is satin soft finish metallic in this palette I'm gonna go into Lomo over here so you can see if I am shifting my hand that Emerald Dream has a lot more metallicness and shift but you can kind of see Lomo is not a matte it definitely has a bit of metallicness but it's like a satin metallic so that is another formulation there. And the third formulation is sparkling and this will contain varying sizes of crushed mineral pearls for a dazzling effect and I love this finish of metallic. It's very similar to like a super shock shadow but in this palette there's actually a couple. Memorize, Flex, Muse but I'm gonna go into Memorize because I don't know if you can see but like this shadow is dented. I love this so much. It's so pretty. That was a really bad swatch. <laughs> it's really hard to get it on camera but as you can see Emerald Dream is a lot more like pigmented. I don't know if you can pick it up. There's a lot of specks of glitters in there but it does keep its metallicness. I'll also show you guys Flex as well because this is so pretty for like a smoky eye.
So yeah, I don't know if that was really helpful, but I just wanted to talk about it because that did pop up in my head when I was doing my little research. But with that being said, that is pretty much going to complete my first impressions review on the Natasha Denona Mini Sunset palette. As with first impressions, it is just first impressions. So the way I feel right now could definitely change the next time I use this palette. But that is how I'm feeling as of now and those are my true thoughts and opinions as I was playing with this palette for the first time today. I do hope you guys found this video helpful. I don't do first impressions very often just because I feel like it's better to try out the product and then come and review it. But I think for eyeshadows, I kind of know what I like and don't like. So yeah, if you guys did enjoy the video, give a thumbs up for me I'd appreciate it so much if you did if you like this quick little like first impressions type of reviews let me know what other products you guys would like me to review after trying this out I am really thinking about getting the um, elf bite size palette so let me know if you guys are like interested in that I know some of you guys already are but yeah that will complete today's video thank you guys so much for watching please subscribe if you haven't already I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video bye